Hello everyone, now let us discuss about the muscles of abdomen that protect the abdominal viscera and move the vertebral column. This is the pictorial representation of abdominal muscles. There are four pairs of abdominal muscles. External oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis and rectus abdominis. This one is the internal oblique. This one is the external oblique and this muscle is the rectus abdominis and this muscle is the transverse abdominis. The anterior lateral abdominal wall is composed of skin, fascia and four pairs of muscles. The external oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis and rectus abdominis. The first three muscles named are arranged from superficial to deep. That is external oblique. External means superficial. External oblique is superficial muscle. Internal oblique is intermediate. And transverse abdominis is the deep muscle. The external oblique is the superficial muscle. And its fascicle extend inferiorly and medially. The internal oblique is the intermediate flat muscle. Its fascicles extend at right angles to those at the external oblique. And the transverse abdominis is the deep muscle. Which most of its with most of its fascicles directed transversely around the abdominal wall. Together, the external oblique, internal oblique, and transverse abdominis form the three layers of the muscle around the abdomen. Each layer, the muscle fascicles extend in different directions. This is a structural arrangement that affords considerable protection to the abdominal viscera, especially from the muscles have when the muscles have a good tone. The rectus abdominis is the long muscle that extends the entire length of the anterior abdominal wall, originating at the pubic crest and pubic symphysis and inserting on the cartilage of ribs 5 to 7 and the epihoid process of the sternum. The anterior surface of the muscle is interrupted by three transverse fibrous ba bands of tissue called as tendinous intersections, believed to be the remnants of septa that separates the myotomes during embryonic development. There are usually three tendinous intersections, one at the level of the umbilicus, one near the zipoid process and one midway between the other two. A fourth intersection is sometimes found below the level of the umbilicus. These tendinous intersections are fused with the anterior wall of the rectus sheet but have no connections to the posterior abdominal wall. These intersections are particularly demonstrated on muscular persons. The muscular persons may possess easily demonstrated intersections as a result of exercise and ensuring hypertrophy, hypertrophy of the rectus muscle. This hypertrophy, however, does not have any effect on the connective tissue of the intersections. And the bodybuilders focus on the development of six-pack effect of the abdomen. And in small percentage of the population, they have a variant of the intersections and they are able to develop even eight-pack. As a group, the muscles of the anterior lateral abdominal wall help contain and protect the abdominal viscera, flex laterally flex and rotate the vertebral column at the intervertebral joints. They compress the abdomen during the forced inhalations and produce the force required for defecation, urination and childbirth. These abdominal muscles, they produce the force required for defecation, urination and childbirth. The aponeurosis, which is nothing but a sheet-like tendons of the external oblique, internal oblique and transverse abdominus muscles form the rectus sheets, which enclose the rectus abdominus muscles. The sheets meet at the midline to form a linea alba. A tough fibrous band that extends from the zipoid process of the sternum to the pubic symphysis. And in the later stages of the pregnancy, this linea alba stretches to increase the distance between the rectus abdominis muscles. The inferior free border of the external oblique aponeurosis forms the inguinal ligament.
which runs from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. Just the superior to the medial end of the inguinal ligament is a triangular slit in the aponeurosis referred to as superficial inguinal ring, the outer opening of the inguinal canal. The inguinal canal contains the spermatic cord and ilioinguinal nerves in males and round ligament of the uterus and ilioinguinal nerve in females. Now coming to the posterior abdominal wall. The posterior abdominal wall is formed by the lumbar vertebrae, parts of the ilia of the hip bones, psoriasis major and iliacus muscles and quadratus lumborum muscle. The anterior lateral abdominal wall can contract and distend, whereas the posterior abdominal wall is bulky and stable by comparison. Here you can see the entire pictorial representation. The anterior lateral abdominal muscles, they protect the abdominal viscera, move the vertebral column and assist in forced exhalation, defecation, urination and childbirth. If you see here, this is the rectus abdominis and this line, right line is the linea alba. And this muscle is the external oblique and these are the tendinous intersections. These lines, right lines are the tendinous intersections and this muscle is the rectus abdominis. And this thing is the aponeurosis of the internal oblique. And this muscle is the internal oblique muscle. And this white one is the aponeurosis of the external oblique. And here you can see the inguinal ligament. And this one is the superficial inguinal ring. Now let us discuss about each muscle. First one is rectus abdominis. Rectus means the fascicles are parallel to midline and abdominis means radiated to abdomen. Origin occurs at pubic crest and pubic symphysis. Insertion occurs at the cart cartilage of ribs 5 to 7 and zipoid process. Coming to the action, the rectus abdominis flexes vertebral column especially lumbar portion and compresses the abdomen to aid defecation, urination, forced exhalation and childbirth. Reverse muscle action flexes pelvis on the vertebral column. Innervation is done by thoracic spinal nerves T7 to T12. The next muscle is external oblique. Origin occurs at ribs 5 to 12. Insertion occurs at iliac crest and linea alba. Coming to the actions, acting together bilaterally external oblique muscles, they compress the abdomen, flex the vertebral column, acting slingly. Laterally flex the vertebral column, especially the lumbar portion and rotate the vertebral column. Innervation is done by thoracic spinal nerves T7 to T12 and the iliohypogastric nerve. The next muscle is internal oblique. Internal oblique Origin occurs at iliac crest, inguinal ligament and the thoracolumbar fascia. Insertion occurs at the cartilage of ribs 7 to 10 and linea alba. Actions acting together, they compress the abdomen and flex vertebral column, acting slingly and laterally flex the vertebral column, especially lumbar portion and rotate the vertebral column. Both external and internal oblique, they do the action together. Coming to the innervation, it is done by thoracic spinal nerves T8 to T12, the iliohypogastric nerve and the ilioinguinal nerve. The next muscle is transverse abdominis. Transverse indicates the fascicles are perpendicular to the midline. Origin occurs at iliac crest, inguinal ligament, lumbar fascia and cartilage of ribs 5 to 10. Insertion occurs at zipoid process, linea alba and pubis. The main action of transverse abdominis is compresses the abdomen. Innervation is done by thoracic spinal nerves T8 to T12, iliohypogastric nerve and the ilioinguinal nerve. The next muscle is quadratum lumborum. Quadratus lumborum. Quadra means four. 
lumbo means lumbar region origin occurs at iliac crest and the ilio lumbar ligament insertion occurs at the inferior border of the rib 12th rib and at l2 l1 to l4 vertebrae coming to the action acting together they pull the 12th ribs inferiorly during forced exhalation fix the 12th ribs to prevent their elevation during deep inhalation and help extend lumbar portion of the vertebrae acting slingly laterally flex the vertebral column especially the lumbar portion whereas the reverse muscle action it elevates the hip bone commonly on one side innervation is done by thoracic spinal nerves t12 and lumbar spinal nerves l1 to l3 or l1 to l4 now coming to the pathological conditions here we will be discussing about inguinal hernia first of all what is hernia a hernia is a protrusion of organ hernia is the protrusion of organ through a structure that normally contains it which creates a lump that can be seen or felt to the through the skin surface inguinal region is a weak area in the abdominal wall it is often the site of inguinal hernia a ruptured or separated portion of the inguinal area of the abdominal wall resulting in the protrusion of a part of the small intestine a hernia is much more common in males than in females because the inguinal canals in male are larger to accommodate the spermatic cord and ingua ilio inguinal nerve treatment of hernias most often involves surgery the organ that protrudes is tucked back into the abdominal cavity and the defect in the abdominal muscles is repaired in addition a mesh is often applied to reinforce the area of weakness thank you for watching please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and cpc training